Beautiful. Welcome, everybody. My name is Eric Rusenberg, the NED DVP of CDD Duda Duda, here with you for the CDD webinar. Uh, thank you for joining us live. If you are joining us right on the call, great to have you here. Um, and if you are joining us after the fact on YouTube, thank you for tuning in and please leave some feedback for us. We love to put these on, but we'd love to know what you like to hear too. Uh, so do leave us a, a comment or send me an email right at ecruthie at gmail.com. And we are glad you're with us. We wanted to talk about uh, our recent spring contests since they are all in the rearview mirror at this point. I wanted to give everyone a chance to uh, share success stories uh, and anything else about our conventions of late that you wanted to share with us. So if I can advance to the next slide, that would be nice. There we go. Cool. Someone else just joined us. Who are you? State your name, friend or foe. <laughs> Diane Brooks. Hey, Diane. How are you? Hi. I'm good, thanks. Welcome. Thank you. Good to have you with us. Um, so just, uh, some, some things in the news I wanted to make sure everyone was aware of. If you aren't already aware, all these webcasts are on, uh, the district webpage, uh, a link to them all, uh, on YouTube, anydistrict.org slash directors. And there you should see, uh, links to all these past webinars online. If you haven't caught them, catch up. Um, if you didn't know, there is uh, a free, free, free coaching for maybe just expenses uh, provided by NEDAC members, the Northeastern District Association of Champions. Uh, a few of them have uh, given me their contact info. And if you, your chorus is interested in having some voice coaching uh, specifically, there are these uh, list of, I have a list of NEDAC members who are happy to help you. Please reach out to me and I'll send you a link and you can browse the list of, of coaches that are available to you. Uh, importantly, in the news, in the NED, we have moved the weekend of Leadership Academy, and I'll pause for hoorays and hurrahs from the crowd, uh, especially due to, the, uh, due to the weather that we sometimes have in the first week of January here in New England. Uh, we've moved it back a month or so to the first week of December. And we're going back to, to the Cape. Is the weather going to be that much better? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to the beach. We're going to Hyannis. Yeah, okay. And we're going to the beach. We'll have a barbecue. Uh, and that is the, that stuff is all on the district website. That's Amazon.com. So it's on the district webpage over here. Uh, we're going to the Cape, the Resort and Conference Center at Hyannis on Scudder Avenue. And I'm sure more information will be forthcoming. But there you go. You can check it out right now online. Uh, so it's for realsies. We've moved it back and we're doing it in December. Hooray, hurrah. Excited to have that available. So make sure you uh, mark that on your calendar. Uh, back to my slide. Where was I? So mark that in your calendar. Uh, coming up very soon, we have a Patriot Division CDWI Chorus Directors Workshop Intensive coming up in June. Uh, it's going to be held. I just found out we have a, a host for it, and it's going to be held in uh, in or about Easton, Massachusetts, which is sort of central to you, Patriot Divisioners. Um, and we need some singers for the house chorus. So in the afternoon, if you don't know, the uh, the, the directors meet in the morning, talk about what they want to do and work on. And in the afternoon, we have uh, a chorus show up, and we need some volunteers. So Patriot Division guys, we're talking to you. Uh, especially if you're nearby, want to come sing on a Saturday, June 3rd. Um, I will absolutely be sharing all the details because they're they're just fresh and I haven't uh, composed them all yet for an email and a, and a blast. But uh, get your chorus guys out there. If you're not able to participate in the CDWI, get your chorus guys to go. The singers learn just as much, if not more, by spending a half a day watching directors in the hot seat. Uh, some of you on the call may may even have experienced this from from one or both sides of this uh, this event. Uh, terrifically so, my, the, the singers who my singers who have gone come out just just all raring to go. Uh, to say nothing of the directors who who uh, do these wonderful d directors education events. Um, so I hope you do can, it. Yes, yes. Who else do is it. out there? Will you're coming, right? Will's going to be one of the directors. Absolutely. You, uh, awesome. 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 Get some singers out there for us. 
Uh, and if you uh, if you are not near that and you would like to do a CDWI, I hope you can reach out to me. Um, I'd love to come out to Sunrise Division and do one out there, Russell. You and your friends out in uh, out in Canada, we've got to get a CDWI up to, up by you. We are actively discussing it. Uh, oh, excellent! I would love to chorus, be part of that conversation. Uh, that's great. The chorus is uh, planning to make that offer and be the chorus. So. Oh, that's wonderful. Yes. Bring me up yeah. to speed on that. That's great. I want to hear all about it. Um, so great. I'd love to come up there. I have I have money in the budget to, to do a bunch of these. So let's let's use it up and, and educate. Um, I like to think of it as sort of the plant or training, training the trainers, teaching the teachers, because if I can teach five directors in one day, to go and teach their 25 member choruses. I've just educated 125 singers in one afternoon and, and it's a fantastic thing to just be able to do that in one little event. Um, so great, I can't wait to, to talk to you about that Russell and, uh, and anyone else out there who'd like to do one, please, please, please reach out. Before we move on, anything else uh, I wanted to celebrate in the news or lift up uh, anything? Uh, uh, not convention related, that it should be on our calendar. Made, right. made anyone aware? Yes, I hear a voice. Uh, just for clarification, the uh, the 2018 Leadership Academy is December 2017. Correct. Got it. Correct. <laughs> Correct. Thank you for clarifying that. Yes, this December. So if you're uh, if you're if you're nominating committee for your chorus needs to get your 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 board you know elected and nominated so they know who's going to be attending this uh, this event right so that that calendar sort of moves up uh, but we, we thought we'd uh, we'd have some more participation uh, it'd be easier for people to stay all day and that's if, the, <laughs> if there's less chance of a snowstorm but we'll be on the beach in sunny Hyannis on December one two three all right. I would love to hear your success stories, your successes, any struggles you had, whether it was uh, the contest stage or the event itself or anything you might like to lift up about your, uh, your chorus's weekend at your convention. Um, let's see. Let's go sort of chronologically. I do want to lift up the successes uh, of our champs and our most improved choruses and salute their directors. So there you go. Patriot Division champs, Bob O'Connell uh, and Providence. Patriot Division most improved, Mark Goodney and Worcester. Granite and Pine, Portland and Jay Wiley. And Granite and Pine most improved was Nashua under the direction of Jonathan and Matt here in Nashua. Congratulations to all you folks and to all you competitors and directors out there. But I wanted to lift those guys up in particular. Um, so who on the call was an Eastern person? I don't want to take up all the airtime here. Uh, who out there was a, went to the Eastern Regional and would like to share any of their stories? <laughs> no Eastern people. Sebi, were you an Will, Eastern person? Will, you talk. No, this is where Will talks when he unmutes himself. <laughs> I didn't want to go first. <laughs> well, Will, you go first. I, I promise to talk. Okay. So, um... So this was my not only this is my first Eastern Regional as a uh, first Patriot Division Chorus Contest as a director. Um, I've been directing the New Bedford chapter for about eight months as the frontline director, and this, and this past this past contest was the first time uh, the New Bedford chapter has competed in about five years. Um, That's great. So we uh, so there was a little bit of. Um, they were they were a little hesitant about coming back. Sure. You know they weren't they didn't have as many guys as they did last time they came. Um, you know new director they weren't sure about it, but we uh, we mustered the guys, we mustered the music, and we showed up, and we were very well received by our by our barbershop peers. Um, I got a lot of great feedback from my from uh, a lot of people that I respect uh, respect their opinions. And even some people that maybe I don't, but they gave me their opinion anyway. And uh, yeah, sorry about that. And uh, no, it's no problem. And uh, so, yeah, so um, the guys had a great time. The guys had a great time singing. We got some great evals, and uh, they're excited to do it again next year. That's great. Good. That's great news. 
good to have you back in the in the contest cycle. What what was the feedback from the guys after having done it? I know there was some uh, there was some hesitance as you as you said. What um, they, they just they weren't. Enjoy? Um, they en- they enjoyed the performance. Um, you know they they always love to get uh get feedback uh from outside sources who aren't me. So our three evals went really well. Um, good. And they they. They listened to people who weren't me, which was great, which is always right. a good thing. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, yeah, they they enjoyed the whole cycle. They they commended our leadership for uh, for ever handling everything smoothly. And uh, yeah, they're just they're excited to be performing. Good. 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 Now, now you should have gotten a uh, an invitation to evaluate the evaluators after you all should have as directors. Um, did you happen to take part in that? I, I don't, I'm not sure that if I, if I don't think I did or not, but, but, uh, Reed, did you get that invitation, Sebi? I did. And Will, I'm I sorry. Always, always do it. Yep. Good. Um, I'll double check my email. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I know they value our feedback on that. So check that one. Great. Great. Any other Eastern people out there, Patriot or Granite and Pine people want to share their sort of stories, successes or struggles, anything? I will share mine then, hearing none. Um, my guys conquered New Hampshire, if you don't know. Um, it's kind of a struggle and a success, actually, in, in all in one. We, we came out um, and sang our first song quite well, I thought. And then we, we had uh, what I call a, a bit of a starting block issue <laughs> on the second song. Uh, somehow the guys on the, on the left side of the chorus didn't quite get the pitch like the other guys on the right side of the chorus did. So we started off in sort of two keys. So I made a decision that I've never had to make, which was start over. And, and I said, if Robert Shaw can do this, I can do this. And I know he's done that before. <laughs> so I stopped. I said, we'll blow the pitch one more time. We blew the pitch one more time and we started again and it didn't really help. <laughs> and so we went on and I knew at the beginning of the chorus, there would be a good setting of tonic and that helped a lot. And we recovered from there. Um, but that was a bit of a struggle and walking off the stage, they were really downhearted down on themselves. And I, I tried to cheer them up and it was a good recovery and, and don't feel bad. You had a great first song. Uh, but they were really down on themselves until the uh, and, and they enjoyed listening to the other choruses during the day. But until the until the evals, um, it, particularly Steve Tramack came in and really uh, got them to feel good about what they had done um, within the first five minutes. He said, "Your your your performance of that first song indicated you had a, a great musical plan. You followed it, and it was it was beautiful and musical, and you're doing a lot of great stuff." Uh, and that second thing was just a performance error, and 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 looking around the room, uh, you know, we're not too worried about that. And he got them to feel good about themselves again, which was great. Uh, I, I know those of you who have worked with Steve before know he has a great way with words and a, such a positive demeanor uh, anytime he speaks in front of a group. So that was that was great. Um, so even though our scores may not have reflected it, we felt good about what we, you know, had worked on. And it, so what we, we tripped out of the starting blocks in the second song that those things happen. So that's my, ours, our, our success and our struggle all wrapped into one, uh, in our experience. Anyway, has anyone else had to ever start a song over in a performance? Was it, was it just me? <laughs> Anybody else out there ever had to do that? Uh, I don't think I've had to start a song over, but uh, actually similar experience. Now I'm, men- now I'm thinking about it. Similar experience actually at Eastern. Um, I learned afterwards that a lot of my guys came up to me after our, our second song and were like, "Will, I didn't really get the pitch," um, but we kind of <laughs> we kind of sh- shook into it after by the time our intro was done, um, and uh, we we live and we learn and we. And the, and it's a little apparent on the video because the video doesn't lie. <laughs> it doesn't lie, does it? But uh, but, uh, but uh, we uh, hopefully we'll uh, we can fix that for next time. Right. <laughs> I've definitely had that experience in a performance. Yeah. Not in a contest. Yep. But and and how did you <laughs> how did you feel just, about it? Just stop, 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 <laughs> stop pitch, it. yeah, tune, go, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, then you just shrug it off. We usually were able to shrug it off because normally the second time it works better. Yes, 
<laughs> At least that's what we hope, right? Exactly. Those things happen. And how did the, how did you uh, talk about it after coming? You know, after the performance, Russell. Uh, you know, just said, you know, let's shake it off. We usually you can at least say oh, we we did do a good performance. That one song we blew the tune up. So let's just pay more attention to the pitch, be mm -hmm. more focused. Obviously, the problem was probably just we got distracted, we lost focus on something. You know, we were looking at someone in the audience or whatever. Stay focused when we start a song, get on pitch, and then, you know, kind of just general pep talk. Yep. Keep going. Yep. <laughs> good. Good, good. All right. So since uh, since Russell's talking, let's move on to the next uh, uh, okay. <laughs> chronological uh, convention we had in Sunrise. Yeah. Yeah. The Sunrise Division champs and most improved, <laughs> I read, were St. John's. Uh, actually, it's St. John. Sorry. Excuse me. St. John's. <laughs> is in Newfoundland. Thank you. St. John is in New Brunswick, and it's S-A-I-N-T. They are very adamant about that. Yeah, I really blew that. <laughs> Come on, Eric. I'll, I'll start there. You're in New Brunswick. I'll You're in New Brunswick. <laughs> Spell it right. <laughs> start the whole show over. I'll stop recording now. But listen, as far as most improved goes, in 2016, St. John was dead last with a 55.5 overall average. OK. They won with a 62.7. Nice. One year from 55 to 62. That's great. Which is, you know, phenomenal. We were That's all great. so excited for them. Yeah. Um, it was a close con. We now our course is um, experience a contest this year. We placed fourth again, which was really disappointing until we saw the scores. Yeah, we only saw our score at first, right? And then we were down a couple points from last year. And I was talking to someone from Dartmouth, uh, another chorus, at lunchtime, before we'd seen anybody else's. And I asked what they scored, and he said, "Oh, I don't remember." And then he made up a number, and the number he made up was like 20 points bigger than us. And I'm going, "Oh man, 20 point spread, and they're only in second. And how bad is this?" Anyway, we finally got the actual scores. Yeah, we were nine points out of first. Oh wow! So the top four were that close. Wow. Uh, we were actually only five points behind Dartmouth, so he, the number he made up was wrong. But in all fairness, he said, I don't really remember, so I can't get mad at him. But, <laughs> but when we looked, I mean, we, the whole chorus was really depressed when we walked into the eval room. Then we were handed the scores, and I looked at them over. I said, guys, we had the highest singing score, and we were only nine points out of first. Said, oh, oh, okay. You know, <laughs> the whole mood changed in right. five minutes. It was yeah. amazing. Yeah. Um, but no, it was a it was a good experience. Um, Fredericton, New Brunswick, is who hosted this year, and um, they you know did a good job hosting, and we had a good good time. It was a good chance to see the see the guys from the other chapters that we only see once a year. Right. And uh, you know, because it's to get from Cape Breton <laughs> to Fredericton. Is it far? Is about a nine-hour drive. It's wicked far, and that's the those. Are the, I think those are the farthest two points. St. John isn't a whole lot different than Fredericton. It's just you go up or down when you hit a one spot in the highway. But right. Um, so from Cape Breton to there is about nine hours. Uh, it's only about four and a half for us. Right. So it's not so bad. But uh, anyway, so that's you know we don't get together often. Right. <laughs> right. But uh, when we, we do, it's always fun. So it was a good, good. contest. And like I said, we're really close. Um, five of the six choruses qualified for district. Wow, great. And the one that didn't uh, was only about three points out. Wow. So Terrific. You know, so we all, we we're feeling good about the overall quality of barbershop right now. That's great. In our area, uh, which is really good to see. And uh, all the scores went down from last year, except St. John's, of course. <laughs> um, all the scores went down. But uh, not by much. Okay. Um, that, that could just be, you know, a different judge is looking for a different thing. So. Yeah. Who knows? Uh, yeah. But uh, overall, though, it was a, a satisfying experience. And like I said, once we saw the the whole scores and realized we were only nine points out of first, fourth place didn't seem quite so bad. Right. Yeah. Cool. Now I've never been. Forgive me. I've never been to a sunrise convention. What's the What's the social scene like at a sunrise convention? Is there a lot of uh, uh, hotel activity, singing together, there, hospitality there rooms? We, 
what we typically do, this started in Cape Breton about five years ago. Friday night, we have a, um, we put on a show, which is normally to raise money for a local hospital or nursing home or youth center or something. So it's a, a charitable event. And uh, so all the choruses take part, all the quartets take part, uh, even some quartets that might not be competing, if they're there, can sing in the show when we, we do a big thing and raise money for somebody. And that's Friday night. Saturday morning we have the contest, because usually we've only got about six six choruses and six or seven choruses, six or seven quartets. Sometimes it's a bit more, but so pretty much it's a Saturday morning contest and Saturday afternoon of vowels. Saturday evening we have a banquet and then usually a really big afterglow. Nice. That goes till one or two in the morning. Nice. So, yeah. Sounds like fun. Yeah, and it is. It, and it, like I said, it's a great chance to see see guys you only see once a year. Yep. Uh, which is always fun. So. Yep. Good. Good. Well, congratulations on a great convention. If we can get up there for a CDWI, hint, hint, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. That would be, that would be great. <laughs> Of course, now that I know that you're coming, we might, you know, be even more anxious to get it. <laughs> oh, geez. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, Yankee and Mountain in the Western Division. I wish I got to uh, get out there for this contest uh, and, and convention uh, because I wish I would have seen that show and that contest. It would have, would have been a great weekend on Lake George. So if, I hope some of you are on the call that could tell us all about the Western Regional. Uh, saluting the Yankee champs, uh, Manchester, Connecticut, and Todd, and most improved Joe, of course, Danbury, Connecticut, uh, and Saratoga Springs getting uh, Mountain Division champs and most improved. Congratulations, Rich, on that. That's terrific. Who out there is from the went to the Western Convention and wants to tell us all about it? Ooh. All right, Sebi, now hey. it's your turn. Me, 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 me. <laughs> yeah. Sebi, raise your hand. <laughs> hand being raised. Okay, good. Call me. <laughs> um, Sebi Massa, ladies and gentlemen. Sebi, what's your what's your what's your district uh, title for those of us who don't know? For those of you who are supremely interested in these things, <laughs> um, I'm the the district vice president of membership and outreach. So not only am I here as a a director, but I also was really interested in seeing what the other directors and other individuals who are on this call are interested in talking about and seeing what our membership, at least as far as course leadership, is thinking about. So definitely two points to learn from here. Um, if Thanks I can jump into the last one. Yeah. Hey, it's fun for me. Um, and the more I know, the better I do my job. Uh, you bet. So the Western region, interesting contest because Yankee Division Most Improved Danbury came out of nowhere. And I mean that because uh, for those of you who may or may not know the story of Danbury, Danbury's been on that that like 65, scoring a 65 kind of, you know, very solid 65, but always a 65 for the past three years, I got to tell you. And it's, I mean, for any course that, that stays in one spot and, and kind of scores the same thing year in and year out, especially when you're in the contest cycle regularly, um, it, it can definitely weigh on you, at least I know from talking with Joe, it, it was a point of frustration. Um, what I think is very interesting regarding Danbury's ascension to most improved and, and being damn close to taking the, I mean, the whole spread in the top three in the Yankee division, the spread was small. So, oh, is that a score sheet? Yeah, let's look at the score sheet. I mean, what is that? One point? Uh, let's see, 68-8, not even a point? To a 69-1? Yeah. That's a, I mean, it's, it's, that's quite a tight it's race. four raw points. It's yeah. four raw points, yeah. which is amazing. Um, but what I thought was very interesting about Danbury's progress was they took a year off. Um, and, and some people would say, well, we really don't want to take a year off because some people like to get those most improved awards and those sorts of things. Um, I forget if they actually took a year off or they just, they just sat out district. But they decided to 
you know, you know, not be in the contest two step of spring and fall, spring and fall, spring and fall, and always kind of working towards a convention, um, which I have to applaud them for because sometimes you feel like you got to be in that rat race. Um, not to call it a rat race, but um, so I applaud them for that, and they just put a lot of energy, did a lot of inventive things. I think they got what they did because they fired confetti cannons in the uptune, but what you know, what do I know? Um, That's a point watching, right there. Yeah, watching Manchester is always a pleasure for me. I think what's interesting about Manchester is kind of they they've been playing around the same score level for a while now. And I think people in that chorus kind of note that. Um, what's also interesting, so for those of you who also don't know, I deal with the Hartford chapter, which if you notice in that score sheet, came in fourth, um, which is totally fine with me. We came in third last year, and it was the first time Hartford ever been in a call-off situation, which is was ex very exciting for them. Um, and they did, you know, they missed the call-off by a few points, but they did at least my course, I couldn't be proud of the guys. I mean, uh, one of the guys, Bob Bradley, who's our DVP of events, who's always backstage at these things, made a comment to me, which was very promising. He said, you know, there was a time when Hartford brought like 12 guys to contest, and now look, you bring an actual chorus. Um, it's like, what, they want a chorus before? But, um, you know, it's nice to know that there are other ways to show growth and show improvement whether it's the number of guys on stage, whether it's your score. Um, so Yankee was just watching the Yankee division kind of flourish in different ways was, was very rewarding. Um, Hartford improved about two points from their district score in the fall on a, what I would call a tough panel. If you don't know the judges on that panel, that's a, that's a real deal panel. Um, and although they didn't make the call off, and we were shooting for most improved and didn't get that, I mean, kind of in the same vein as Eric was talking about, when guys come off the stage and they feel good, and then they get, or they feel bad, and you know, or you get a score and then you feel bad, and you go, well, now I got to play, uh, Mr. You know, pep talker um, to make sure everyone feels good. It's always trying to pull out the successes um, that they did have, and. As everyone tends to, to know, evals were, were very positive. Thank goodness, that's the name of the game with the evals. Um, but but the contest experience was a good one. For from what I understand, most of the courses, I will say, um, if there's any director on in, on this call or anybody who knows of a chapter who is particularly small and under 12 guys, because there's that requirement that you be 12 people to be in a chorus contest. Um, the VLQ contest has made some big strides uh, this year in particular, and one of the most noticeable things was that uh, the Troy, New York chapter, which doesn't have 12 guys in it, uh, so they couldn't go into the chorus contest, uh, were able to compete in the VLQ contest. And I mean, they haven't been out in, in a long time. Good, good so for being them. Able to yeah, being able to see Troy come out and perform for an audience, you know, very receptive, always very welcoming audience. Um, that was very nice to see. Seeing Pittsfield come out was also very promising. Another right. chapter that hasn't come to a convention in a quite a while. Good. Um, so seeing those levels of participation um, is always good for anybody, especially the the membership vice president. But <laughs> mm, right. But having more people there in general just makes for a more pleasant experience, I think. Yeah, the more the merrier, right? So, I mean, by all means, Western was an absolute success as far as the number of choruses coming out to compete, the quality of singing, and and really just seeing these kind of new angles that choruses are taking to experience um, either the joy of singing for an audience, uh, the thrill of success, or the determination to improve. It's, it was just really welcoming to see. Good. That's great. And did you happen to stick around for the show or did you take off? Ha. <laughs> uh, well, when, when you've got a quartet in the finals, <laughs> yeah, you're there. Um, and, and the, the show was fantastic. Uh, Voices of Gotham, although I, I would 
venture to say they brought a smaller number than their full uh, chorus. They just, you know, it, it was definitely something that you could see most of those chorus guys in the audience going, I want to do that. I mean, not only the inventive arrangements that just captivate, but also the, the just the cleanliness of singing, you know, and, and for me watching uh, Bill Stauffer, it was kind of like, give me his hands. Isn't that great? Give them to me. That's great. <laughs> Amazing hands. Absolutely. Yeah. Were you, were you, well, some of you on the call, I know were, were, were present when Bill came to teach uh, us at Leadership Academy, right? It was a great, yep. day. great, great day. So much talent in those hands and that brain. Skinny Kirk, as Kirk calls him. I was in the audience. I was in the audience for the um, for the Gotham performance too. Yep. And one of the things that caught me um, that I'm going to bring back to my guys is um, we always talk about facial engagement and telling the story. And I looked, I looked hard for someone in that chorus that wasn't into the story, and I couldn't find one. Even the older, even the clearly, got, you know, the gray hairs in that group, the the couple that showed up, they were right there with everyone else. So. I'm going to tell my guys, you have no excuse. That's right. <laughs> Good for you for looking. I'm always telling my guys, there's always someone looking at you. <laughs> there's someone out there in the audience whose eyes are on you, or the camera is panning across you, and you are on the Jumbotron at one time or another. So you've got to be involved all the time. Well, Good for you for looking for that. It's great to see. Cool. Anything else about Western? Anyone want to share? Maybe even not uh, not from the stage or from, but from the crowd perspective. I see Chris out there. How you doing, Chris? All right. Um, I I wanted to share that uh, um, we sold this uh, going to um, the convention as a uh, with a distinct um, um, focus on having fun and that the scores were not important. And we went in there specifically with that with that uh, focus on it, and because we had not been to um, convention since 2015 when it was open uh, at district, and uh, so we 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 went in there with that with that. Uh, although certainly we we spent a lot of time and energy preparing for it, right. Um, right. but the focus was let's have let's go and have a fun time and enjoy the rest of the things beyond the contest on Saturday. So a lot, a lot of the guys stayed, you know, we, we, um, we had two quartets in the quartet contest. We had the chorus and we had a VLQ. So we went for all three contests. And I was very, very happy about that kind of participation. Great. And uh, one, of the, one of the things about that I thought was really cool about the particular setup of the Lake George Auditorium at the high school where we where we're, where the contest was held was after the competitors came off the stage they came basically directly back in and there was a second round of applause for every single one of them and that was absolutely unexpected and fabulous I thought that was a, a really nice touch how oh, cool my hands hurt <laughs> <laughs> that's great Cool. Good for you. Also wanted to let you know that uh, this was my first contest as a frontline director. I've only been doing this for four months now. Congratulations. Congratulations. That's great news. So first time, first time, uh, uh, um, what's, what's the word I'm looking for? I always ask my new, my, my newest singers. Like this is your first time ever doing this. What's your what's your opinion of this whole experience? Uh, so so Chris, you're you're the first time at the front. What's your what's your opinion of this this contest thing? It really depends on how you decide what's what's important for you to get out of the participation. Mm -hmm. We are not a, a competition focused and score focused chorus. We we spend a lot more time working on um involved trying to get the, the guys involved and to be as entertaining as we can and certainly you know we we ended up paying for that in some of the vocal techniques that didn't get done you know as well as we uh have some have done sometimes but again it was it's it's the it's the focus that you put on it it's the expectations that you bring to the to the stage that uh you know my my, my mantra the last three weeks before we went to is 
have uh, find tell the story, find somebody and uh, engage them, you know, in the audience, and that's what we're here for. That's what we that's what we're looking to do. And we since we did that, we we did our plan of you know being as entertaining as we can and uh, connecting with the audience and telling the story, then we were pretty happy. Um, the scores did not reflect that, but you know that's that's not what our focus was on. Well, good good for, good on you for setting the goal of of connecting with your audience. I think we all need to do that more, right? Absolutely. Right. Well, that's a great segue to our next thing. Is there any other uh, convention uh, news or celebrations or struggles or anything out there that we haven't talked about yet of, of any of our three conventions? Uh, well, I've, actually, I've got a question. Yeah, Sebi. And and it's, I mean, convention related only because it deals with scores. And, and I know that, you know, sometimes if you've got a chapter that you can tell isn't folks on the score, awesome. Because... I know so many guys, even though they say, huh, welcome to New England, say one thing, think another. Um, you know, they say, we don't care about the score, we're just going to have fun. But then they see the number and they go, hmm. Um, I wonder if there is something, a better way to help convey to our guys. Um, I, I want to say, based on the list that I see here, it was Russell that was talking about Sunrise, uh, about a, a score dip. And I haven't seen that score sheet, um, but you know, if we're, if some courses see a dip per se of like a 63 to a 62, being able to convey to guys that I mean, really in our our contest and judging system, those are kind of the same scores. I mean, pretty much the same score. Yeah. Well, I mean, as far as you're in a certain range, and the difference of a point is just kind of dependent on the day. Yeah. Yep. And I wonder if there's a better way to talk about that. Because I know I kind of struggle with that when guys go, well, we did this last time or we did this another time. And I go, well, you know, I mean, Hartford went from a 60 to a 62. And, and while I applaud their, their their improvement and I'm thrilled for them, I also do recognize to a certain degree we're still in the same range. Yep. So your question is how do, how do I better talk to my guys about uh, getting 63 one year and 62 the next year and not getting down on themselves about that? Yeah. Cool. That's a good question because as I know, I know that the faces on my risers often uh, look and sound the same as what you just described when that happens. Um, I know what I might say, but I'm, I, I open that up to the rest of you uh, directors out there. Let's uh, let's use the hive mind. Uh, and talk about what you might have told your guys in the past or your girls in the past if you direct uh, ladies' choruses. Absolutely. Uh, same deal. Um, go ahead and light up your microphone if you want to chime in. I see, Chris, you're still, your mic is on. Oh, Chris just ducked out. Okay. See you later, Chris. <laughs> That's fine. Well, I, I, I've been in this position before. We, you, you work hard and you come back and we have this whole, you know, plan for our wonderful song and it's, it's, uh, the same score or a, a, a tad a skosh less than last time. Uh, and you, you as the director are left in the position of trying to convince them that <laughs> they haven't been spinning their wheels unnecessarily all year, right? Um, right. Yeah, I, I think what you just described is, is yeah, the, this is a it, these guys are coming in from out of town to take a, a Polaroid picture of you in time, uh, and this Polaroid picture today looked like this. That doesn't mean what you've done over the last year is uh, bad or unnecessary or the wrong decision. That just meant that the performance you gave today was was this. Uh, and tomorrow it could be a 65 or a 72. Uh, but that doesn't mean you, you've taken the wrong uh, plan or doing the wrong steps or anything like that. Uh, and yeah, well, one point off is not to me statistically significant, uh, nor is, you know, two or maybe even three. Uh, that's all in sort of the same range to me. Um, talk about five points. Yeah, that's a little more different, but you know, one, no, that's, that's the same bunch of guys, you know, can show up and do that, uh, pretty easily, uh, in either direction, plus one, plus two, you know, or minus a yeah. couple. Right. Will, you turned on your mic. What do you have to add to that? 
Yeah, so I have a little bit different of a of a perspective on this um, because because that chorus hasn't uh, direct hasn't been on the contest stage in about five years. I kind of had two camps in my course. I had guys who had competed in this course before, way back when, um, and I had guys who had never competed with the with the uh, with the New Bedford chapter before. And uh, for for the guys who had competed before. They remember a time when they won the small chorus contest five years ago, and they were singing in the higher 60s. Uh, I don't remember exactly what their scores were, but I knew they were. In, I know they're in the high 60s. Um, and then we, you know, a couple weeks ago we put up a 55.5. Um, I have to. I have to call Janet from from uh, the Sunrise Division and find out how she jumped seven points in a year. Um, hmm. uh, but but uh, so what I told the guys. Uh, basically, I had to uh, uh, tell them. I'd remind them why they why they went to the contest in the first place, uh, because the, in all that build up, it wasn't we're singing for a score. It was uh, or it was let's field a chorus, get there, perform, remind the district we're still here, um, and we're still kicking. And uh, you know uh, they were a little doubt, disheartened to see their score afterwards, but I just kind of had to remind them. You know, all the same points we, you you've probably all told your courses. Every pit's different. You know, that's just the performance of the day, and uh, you know, just kind of keep their hopes up. And uh, once and I showed them, I got a TV and I showed them their contest video the week the week after. Um, so not the Tuesday after the weekend, but the Tuesday after that, the next Tuesday, they got to see their video. Uh, they got to see their they got to see their performance, and it, uh, that was a huge uh, huge eye-opener for them to see, you know, what they sounded like and what they looked like. You know, they weren't as, as they weren't as engaged as they thought they were. Uh, you know, they weren't as in tune as they thought they were. So, um, you know, so it was a really good, you know, I had to kind of remind them why we went and for the reasons, uh, you know, we accomplished all the goals we set went to go in. Just, you know, they were fairly minimal by some standards, but, uh, you know, the guys, the guys got got out of it what they what we decided to get out of it and uh, and uh, yeah, yeah it was a great experience. Good, I'm glad to hear that. Um, personally, I guess from from my standpoint, I've I've come a, 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 along a spectrum from when I first started directing a lot of years ago um, to where I am today. Uh, I. You know, I used to be in the, we're going to work on two songs for a bunch of weeks in a row before a contest and make sure that those two songs are good. And my guys didn't seem to have as much fun as I thought they should be having at a convention, nor were they pleased with their performance necessarily. So we, we, we I kind of went to the, let's list a bunch of things that are contestable on the CJ20 and a couple weeks out, I'll make up my mind as to which ones they'll be. And I want to make sure all my repertoire songs are good anyway. So let's make sure that happens. And we'll pick two songs relatively close to contest time that are sounding pretty good. And we'll do those. And my guys, <laughs> for the first year I did that, their scores shot up a bunch of points, which is amazing. We, we worked less on, on our contest songs and our, and our stuff went up, right? Uh, but they just had a, a much more uh, uh, enjoyable time at the contest. There was much less stress involved. Um, and they were pleased with what they did too. So uh, that's been my philosophy sort of, of of late to the last five or six years with my guys. And, and they and they usually show up and do a pretty you know respectable job of the the low sixties, and they're 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 working hard to get to the to the middle sixties and 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 improve. Um, but uh, that's that's at least been been my take on things. Anybody else have some feedback on that? Love to hear it. I know in Hartford um, we kind of we went kind of along those lines as far as contest prep and. and we kept them guessing and there were there were always about five songs that we knew were were in the mix and we always kind of said okay well you know we're going to work them all because we want them all to be good anyway um and yet for some reason i don't know how it happened i still feel like at some point we i think we settled on them about three weeks out and that might, still might have been too much time to spend on you know, refining right. contest music. Yep. Um, 
not saying we worked just two songs in a rehearsal, but no. even then it was kind of like, huh, I wonder if guys are getting too too uptight about these are the contest songs. Right. Of course, highly it's too late to pick something. <laughs> Day of. Sure. Depends on your goals and your and your and your culture there, right? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Anything else we want to chat about? Contest, convention, anything? Good, bad, ugly. That's a that's a really interesting perspective to kind of have a bunch of uh, contest contestable music ready loaded, and then just kind of picking you know the couple weeks before. I've never been in a court been involved in a group that's done that. Um, We've always had the mentality of, you know, we know the contest songs two months in advance. You know, let's get them, let's grind them down to, let's grind them down to nothing before we put them on stage. Right. By the time, you know, by the time we, we put them on stage, we hate them and want to stop singing them. Um, <laughs> and how, um, how, and I say this sort of tongue in cheek, how has that worked for you? Um, it, 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 we score, the groups I've done it in, they've scored high, but they weren't fun. <laughs> Yeah. Um, Eric, I didn't get it. You didn't. I don't think you threw out an exact number. How for for your chorus? How how many weeks out in that model of we'll throw five or six songs on the CJ twenty and just yeah. pick two? Yeah. Um, how far how far out do you go? All right, guys, these are the two. Uh, it's varied over the years, but I think this this year it was three weeks that I'd picked them. Um, I think because of just the way I was going to be able to be at rehearsals. I needed to get them out there a little a little sooner because I was going to have a baby and taking off some rehearsal time. So I wanted to make sure that they knew. Um, but yeah, like you said, two or three weeks uh, would be would be nice to spend a little just a little extra time so they know and are comfortable with those things. Uh, and, and I think that was just about right for for my guys. And it's going to vary for your guys, uh, of course, because it's it's a different culture in your room, right? I see some microphones right. lighting up. Russ, I see I see your microphone lit up. And then Chris. Go ahead, Russ. Yeah. We, we've already picked out our songs for next year. Yep. Mostly. Yeah. Because um, the guys were saying, we've got to start working on them soon. But I know choruses around here who pretty much from March to May, those are the two songs they do at rehearsal. March and to May. Yeah. that's almost it. Yep. You know, they'll do an hour on each song and then do some other stuff. But right. uh, depends on the know, culture. Really, group. really killed. Cool. Sure. It is. Yeah, we we deliberately did not want to do that. Right. Uh, we wanted to be able to say we're singing all our songs at approximately the same level. Right. And we worked more on the two contest songs that we had chosen. We chose them pretty early on. We chose back January. We knew what we were going to do, but. We worked a little more on those, but we worked on everything because we didn't want to have two songs that sound great and everything else that sounds, well, I guess it's okay. We wanted everything to be pretty good. So mm -hmm. that's been our our focus. Our focus was to get everything sounding reasonably good. Then these other choruses come and they start, you know, they beat us a contest every year. <laughs> Although this year, St. Bun did their own thing. and good for them. Right. Uh, I'm not putting them in that category. I, I, I only ever hear them at contests. Yeah. I have no idea what other songs they sing. Right. But, uh, a friend of mine who, oh, he's he passed away about a year and a half ago, but he was in a chorus, or one of our choruses for a long time. He said, what, what every chorus should do, they should go to contest, give the judges their entire repertoire and have the judges pick two songs at random. Ooh. That's how you find out how good Ooh. a chorus really is. Yeah. <laughs> what a Ooh. great idea. <laughs> yeah, it was a... Jot that down, C and J. That's yeah. a great idea. So, uh, yeah. yeah, you can't just pick two songs to work. However, you could still load it with. Uh, well, there are only two songs that are actually contestable, so they're probably the ones they're going for. But. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Interesting. cool. Thank you, Russell. Uh, Chris, what did you have to say? Well, we had uh, an interesting kind of juxtaposition. We had our annual show or one of our big shows um, a month before, and we have coming up in a week and a half, um, another show where we're doing an hour's worth of um, uh, programs. So we have had to continue to, to develop all of our repertoire and keep it at a, at a high level. So we, we couldn't afford the time to do um, spending, you know, three quarters of an hour, an hour on each song, nor would our 
guys stand for that. I mean, if I did, if I did that, we'd, we'd lose uh, probably 10 guys right away. Mm -hmm. they, was, they would just stop coming until the contest was over. Right. So uh, I'm, I'm right along with that, um, with that uh, philosophy. And we, uh, I knew, I told them that we were going to contest with a particular song, with the ballad. And we knew that, you know, back in January. And we didn't pick the up tune until, uh, I think, uh, a week before, the week before. And we had three other up tunes that we were, you know, trying them with as a, as a contest set. Every, every week we would try a different set together with the ballad. Mm-hmm. Cool, cool, cool. What else? Anybody? Oh, someone's vacuuming. Oh, there we go. <laughs> um, great, great, great. So let's see. I had put in the notes uh, in my first original email if you guys wanted to talk about the book Acting Songs, which is, uh, as you know, what the performance category folk have modeled the new category after. Uh, I'd, I'd be happy to chat about that a little with you. Um, but if, if no one's read it, I'd love for it to be more of an interactive conversation rather than uh, Oprah's book club. <laughs> Me sitting here talking to you about it. Uh, so, have you read it out there, out there in cyberspace? Have you have you read this book? It's a it's a great little read. Talk to me. I mean, if it was Oprah's book club, I would have gotten a free book, <laughs> so I could have read it. Well, the link is in the chat. You're on your own. <laughs> oh, the link is in the chat. <laughs> there you go. I'll put, it's in the chat, and I'll put it in the in the YouTube notes after. But yes, if you search for it on Amazon, acting songs by David Bernetti. Uh, basically written from the perspective of the of the voice teacher of, of private students uh, who are working on developing a song uh, to sing by themselves. But the, the concepts um, apply, obviously, to us, and especially to us as directors when we're developing uh, our own story and our own interpretation of a song that we need to teach to a room full of people, right? Um, anybody else out there have, have read it so far? If not, I'll just sort of do go down sort of his summary, which has worked for me so far. Uh, it's a quick read. Uh, I, I think I read it over the course of a couple days. Um, most of the book is applicable directly to what you do as a director. I'll say that. And then some of it is, uh, you know, preparing audition songs for your next uh, singing gig, which is, which is not necessarily uh, relevant to what, what you do as a director. But um, so just I, I wanted to quote his summary of preparing uh, first off, like the first steps of what you should be doing. Uh, and I put uh, some pictures there that hopefully you can see, but if not, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll read a little bit. Uh, the, to summarize his process, writing the lyrics out in paragraph form as if they were a speech. So looking at it as prose from the very beginning, you know, it's part of it's part of a play. It's part of something else uh, from the start, right? Based on the lyrics, based on the words. And then he says, listen to the music once or twice to get a sense of the emotional nature of the song, you know, where the music lifts up and, and subsides and things like that. If the song is from a musical and the script is available, I don't know how many of you have ever done this, read, it, read the script to find out what the dramatic context is for your song. Um, I will openly admit that I have never done that. Has anybody else ever, ever out there gone and looked up the script, you know, for, for uh, uh, Damn Yankees when you're going to sing You're Going to Have Heart and see where it falls in the context of the, of the whole thing? Anyone? Bueller? I haven't done that, but I've, I've watched the musicals that I've been singing songs from. Right. Yeah. Kind of along the same lines, right? But sometimes it's good to have the actual words in front of your face. Yeah, true. And then he says, uh, let's see, read the lyrics aloud simply just to understand their sense and then begin, begin your preparation. Ask, what is this song about? Answer with a single phrase that expresses a human action. A single phrase. So this song is about a person, blah, write a line of dialogue that could replace the song. I love that one. Distilling its essence. Most often, the final lines of the song will reveal its core action. So, so if you were the if you were the uh, uh, director of the musical, 
uh, and you said, we don't have time for this song. We need to cut the whole song down to two sentences of dialogue because we don't have time. What would it be? Or one sentence of dialogue. We got to replace this whole thing. What's the core nugget that is going to be replacing this song? And that's a, that's a great exercise, right? Uh, I was in a couple evals that Kirk Young uh, was a was the ev- the evaluator, mm-hmm. and he 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 takes it to the extreme of one word. Yeah, nice. That's a that's a huge challenge. On any song, I mean, this is not just for contest, right? This is for preparing to try to connect with your audience using this vehicle, right? Then uh, he says, create an imaginary situation based in your own experience, feelings, and needs that will require you to speak these words to someone. Tell yourself a story. So based in your own experience of you, create an imaginary situation. Hmm. Decide upon an objective. If I think if, if things go the way I want them to, after I sing this song, blah, I will have convinced her that I love her. Or... Or you know, anything, right? Depending on the song. If things go the way I want, what's going to happen? And then decide upon an obstacle. What's what's getting in the way? What what would what would it say if it could speak this obstacle? You have a job to get done. What's in your way? What conflict will the song resolve? You know, she's not she's not convinced that you love her, right? So how do you how are you going to convince her? What's the conflict? She's not, she's not buying it. Uh, what serious consequences will you suffer if you don't achieve your objective? Oh my gosh, I'll lose her forever, right? Uh, set up your circumstances so that the opposite of what you want exists at the beginning of the song. Right? <laughs> Something is in the way, and the opposite of your goal is, is happening right before you sing. Look out into your imaginary world. Something is not as you wish it to be. You'll use the song to correct things to make them right. Create an opening beat for yourself, an event that triggers you, propels you into speaking the first line. What had, what had just happened? I was using this with my guys a couple of weeks ago. What has just happened that has inspired you to sing? Uh, speaking wasn't enough, so you, you, you burst into song because this was so important. What just happened? For me, uh, for example, we were, we sang uh, Georgia on my mind at contest, and the first words are uh, melodies bring memories that linger in my heart. Right, and those of you who know the barbershop arrangement of that. Um, and we thought about it, and and those, so melodies bring memories that linger in my heart. So you just heard a tune, you just heard a song on the radio that reminded you of, in our case, this this girl. And you think back on that. So, so that was our that was the event that just happened. You just heard a song that brought back all these memories of this girl. Cool. And they, my guys really really latched onto that. Anyone else have a, an example of that? Don't all jump in. <laughs> Is my mic still on? Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> this is great radio, guys. I tell you what. <laughs> uh, where was I? You can either take the time to memorize the text at this point, or you can gradually memorize it as you rehearse. Now that you've emotionally turned on in your imaginary world uh, with a job you urgently uh, you need urgently to accomplish and an obstacle in your way, speak the lyrics to your imaginary partner. So you've got it all set up. Speak it out loud. Speak the lyrics to make something happen. Remember, your partner is the important one as far as you're concerned. Then rehearse the monologue always with an improvisational feel. Remember, this is a book for solo singers, not for barbershoppers. And we always, you know, I think you think about the barbershop ballad. Uh, so improvisational in in our in rhythms, right? Uh, And that's exactly what he's telling us to do here, always with an improvisational feel and with a tremendous variety of tactics. What do you think he means by that? Rather than me reading you this book, a variety of tactics. (laughs) Using each line in a fresh way to achieve your objective. One objective, many tactics. So how are you going to convince her?
Well, we say the title of the song over and over in our song, right? So what are, what are the different ways we can emphasize the title of the song, for instance? Right. Hey, Eric, hey. I've got a kind of burning question. Um, and and the artist in me is, is following you 101%, but only 101. Okay. Um, I'll take that. But the, the, but the chorus director in me, and I don't want to say the realist, but the um, maybe the pessimist, who knows? Um, part of me sits here and goes, "This is wonderful, and I can do this for myself as a director, like you know, framing how I want to direct a particular song." Um, but you know, it's kind of like, well, if the guys don't buy it, who cares? At the same time, so there's so there's that aspect making sure that they buy the same thing I'm buying. Mm -hmm. At the same time, there's this other aspect that might um, might catch the attention of the Will Rogers of the world, um, something akin to, I would love to do this, but my guys can't even get off the, you know, can't remember the words, so how can we tell a story if we don't even know the damn words? You know what I mean? I do it's know what you mean. I mean, it's kind of this, this, I would love to go to this very artistic place and yet the nuts and bolts aren't there. And sure. is it, do we, do we just take the leap of faith and, and maybe trust that going to this place is going to enhance the ability to learn words and, and know a story um, because you feel it first rather than, you know, being technical. Yep. Yep, I think you, I think you've partially answered your own question. I think I think uh, I have yet to start teaching a song using this. I've sort of applied it already, sort of after the fact, on top of already having taught my guys a song. I think if I were to start my next song with this in mind, I th I would hypothesize, and I'm happy to happy to hear from the rest of you. I would hypothesize that. Now that I know the movie and the struggle and the obstacles and all that, that the words are merely just uh, the way I'm going to uh, prove my point and convince the girl that I love her or tell my story in some way. And, and they become less of a, I have to memorize this and I need to put my right hand up now for barbershop move to a, and a sequence of things that I do with my mouth and my voice rather than, you know what I'm saying, rather than uh, a way of communicating with, with my audience and connecting with them. I think mm -hmm. that change, to me, I'm happy to hear what the rest of you have to say, but that, I think that change to me uh, makes a, a huge difference to us as humans. Dead silence. Way to, way to kill a party, Eric. <laughs> No, I, I buy it. I completely buy it. It's just, you know, it's, it's always it's always being willing to take that that leap of faith. You yep. Know? That that's gonna be so the try new way to do it because there's yeah. Try I, it. Try your next new song and 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 do what he says. I I bet I'll bet you a nickel. I bet you a nickel that that words won't be an issue. Guess what? Harper's next new song is Lost in the Stars. There you go. Good song to do it on. So I wanted to share that just that summary with you folks. I, I think I think that in and of itself is kind of the the nugget of what he spends a, a good deal of the book on. And he then goes to once you've done this, he talks about adding in the rhythm to the lyrics, and then he talks about adding the melody on top of that. Uh, but I think this right here is the core emotional nugget of of telling our story and connecting with our audiences. Cool. Um, so like I said, the link is in the chat. Um, and I would love to uh, hear anything else that you folks have to say about that. It's a great little book. Uh, do pick it up. And I was not paid to uh, plug this in any way. I think it's uh, beneficial for, for any of us as directors in our hey, preparation Eric. of what we do. Yes, sir. When you say link is in the chat, do you mean, so when I'm on this website, this, this, this go to meeting thing. Yep. You mean that little chat bubble on the side? In the go to meeting control panel. 
Uh, I put it in, maybe might have been before you joined, so I don't know if you see it if you join after that, but I'll be happy to pop, uh -huh. it, pop it in again. I um, it again. I'll do that copy. I'll put it in. So it should. And send, and that should pop up in your chat, in your controls somewhere. Is. Okay, there you go. Fantastic, thank you. You're I welcome. Like, huh, You're welcome. Linked. I don't have a link. Sorry about that. But now right. I do. All right. Anything else to add? Any other any other books that you folks out there as directors have found helpful? Please uh, lift them up and share, because uh, the the smarter we all are, the the better our singers are, right? Um, I, maybe maybe folks have read this, but I would always put it back up. I actually, it's something. It's one of those books that you read, and then I came back to it three years later, just looking for a particular. Just kind of go, huh. What was that bit in that book about that thing? And then I ended up reading the whole thing again. I went, ah, this it, it takes on new meaning as as your chorus develops and you change as director. Is uh the the Visions of Excellence book? Oh yeah, published by BHS. Yep. Um, I just I just thought it was interesting how that one book, um, although somewhat simple on its face, kind of can change with you. Um. So if anyone hasn't read it, I recommend reading it and then putting it down for two years or so and then coming back to it because I learned something new this time around, which is great. Cool. Yeah, I picked that up when I went to Harmony U. Speaking of Harmony U, if any of you are frontline directors and have never been to Harmony U, you get tuition free. Just uh, uh, talk to me or talk to Donnie Rose and we'll send you the uh, the link to that. Uh, just got to fill out a little application and you get to go for free as a first-time attendee to Harmony U. Uh, right, Will? I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm going. Yay. Is that Chris? Oh, I've been twice, but uh, been I'd twice. love to go again. Yeah, do it. Do it. I went, uh, I went last summer. It was fantastic. What a great, great time. Russell, you've been every year for the last 50 years, right? Well, 11 anyway, <laughs> but, uh, it is amazing. It's a blast. Yeah, um, it soak up everything you can. Join Just everything punch. you can. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's a whole lot of fun. Good. Uh, the honor, the honors course for anybody thinking about doing that is a lot of work, but tremendously fun. This year, the director's a guy you might have heard of named Kirk Young. Yes, I have heard Kirk. of him. I have heard of yeah. him. I, I'm looking forward to that. We, I mean, we've had Joe Cerruti yeah. in the past, uh, Steve Armstrong, um, Mark Hale. Jim Henry, you know, just nobody's. Yeah, bunch of schmoes, right? <laughs> and yeah. I, Jim Henry is the only one that I wasn't there for. I, I was at Harmony U that year, but I wasn't in the honors course the first two years because I was in yeah. director's college and right. everything was pretty packed. Right. But uh, So I missed Jim Henry's and I missed Mark Hale's first year, but after that, I've been every year. And cool. It's an amazing experience. You, you learn so much as a director yep. watching. Watching a director. Yeah. Watching Darren yeah. Drown direct, watching yeah. Joe Cerruti, watching Steve yep. Armstrong, watching uh, Doug Harrington. It's just phenomenal. That's cool. That's uh, cool. The experience. Nice. Hey, you're, you're going to be doing a, an arrangement of mine this year. You guys are doing Yes, that, uh, I saw that. Yeah, I love being here with you. I was so honored yeah. that Kirk asked about that. Very cool. Yeah, I saw that. I thought, That's one of Eric's. That's so yeah. neat. Very cool. All right, guys. Well, I appreciate everyone's time, especially on Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to all of you on the call who are mothers and uh, and to all your <laughs> your uh, significant others who let you come on the barbershop call on Mother's Day. Uh, make sure you thank them for that. So thank you, and I hope to see you soon at our, one of our upcoming events at a CDWI or something. And again, if you want to have one of those CDWIs in your neighborhood, please let me know. I want to come to your neighborhood and help. Okay. Great. Hey, Eric, I have a question about CDWI. Hit it. You said it was in Easton? Yes. I will send absolute uh, an address soon. Yes. Did you? Was there a host chapter? Uh, uh, the Harmony Inc. chapter, uh, Notable Blend, is actually going to uh, set us up with their rehearsal space. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah, so, so kudos, now you really do. Now you really need them. male singers. Yeah, no, it's real. Yeah, it's 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 happening. <laughs> so bring your chorus. It's going to be a great day. Awesome. All Thank right, you. everyone. Have a great evening. We'll see you next time. Thanks. Take care.